In this video, let us learn to draw an ER diagram for the topic College Canteen Management. So, if we are asked to draw ER diagram, the first step is we need to choose the entities. In order to choose the entities, you must know what an entity is. Entity is nothing but an object with physical or conceptual existence. So, when you take college canteen management, what are all the entities that are possible to come in a diagram? So, when you take college canteen, canteen is an important entity because canteen is an object, it is physically present. Canteen is a building, you are able to touch the building, therefore canteen is an entity. And in the ER diagram, Entities must be written inside a rectangular box. So, canteen is our entity and we must write that inside a rectangular box. Next, for that canteen, students will go as well as staffs will go to eat something during break or lunch hours. So, therefore, student is an entity and staff is also an entity. Both are entity because student is also physically existing. Student is a person. Therefore, staff is also a person. So, therefore, both are entities and it must be written inside a rectangular box. Next, workers. So, in canteen, workers will be there. So, therefore, workers are also person. So, person is physically existing. Therefore, worker is an entity. So, we must write it inside a rectangular box. Next, menu is an entity. Because menu is very important. So, if you take this menu, it is both physically existing as well as conceptually existing. Now, for example, if you take 10 colleges, it is not necessary that all 10 colleges should prepare a menu card or should show menu only in this way. So, some colleges, they will write the menu in the whiteboard and they'll place it somewhere in the middle of the canteen. In some canteens, they'll print the menu and they'll stick it on the wall. In some canteens, there won't be any menu. The workers will dictate the menu when asked. So, it depends on each canteen. So, if a particular college's canteen is writing it in the whiteboard, it is physically existing. You are able to touch the whiteboard. Whereas it is the same when it has been stuck on the wall also, you can touch. Whereas when the worker is going to say it is not physically existing, it is conceptually happening. The person is dictating to you. So, menu has been said by a person. So, it is conceptually said. It is, you cannot touch the menu at that time, but you can understand that this canteen has these items and those items are dictated by the worker. So, therefore, menu is an entity and it is physically as well as conceptually existing. So, you must write it inside a rectangular box. Next, bill counter. So, bill counter. Now, if you take canteen, canteen is one big building. In that big building, a small portion of that building so, small part of that building will be the bill counter. So, therefore, that small building you can physically touch. Therefore, bill counter is physically existing. So, since it is physically existing and it is an object, it is an entity. So, I am writing it inside a rectangular box. So, my entities are canteen, students, staff, workers, menu and bill counter. The second step is we need to write the attributes for every single entity separately. Attribute is nothing but characteristics of entity. If you take canteen, what are all the characteristics of canteen? I should write surrounded by this entity. Next characteristics of worker, I should write surrounded by this. We must know one thing that attribute must be written inside oval shape. So, we are supposed to draw oval shape and write the attribute name inside the oval shape. So, now let us fill in the attributes. 
for every single entity separately. If you take canteen, canteen will have a name. So name is an attribute of the entity canteen. If, for example, you take 10 colleges, all 10 colleges will be having a canteen. And the name of each ca canteen will be differing. So, therefore, every college will be having a canteen which has a name. Next, location of the canteen. So, every canteen will have a location because if you take 10 colleges, 10 colleges will be located in different places. Maybe some, for example, maybe 3 colleges are located in the same area, but it is not necessary, but it is not possible for all 3 colleges to be located in the same exact place. Maybe nearby, nearby two buildings like that it can be located but not in the very same place so location will be differing for every single college next phone number of the canteen i have to write this inside double oval because it is multi value attribute because canteen will be having phone number in order to contact now, this phone number is necessary because, for example, if staffs want something, they can call to the canteen directly and ask some worker to come and, you know, give them the food, supply the food to them uh, during emergency times. And also, when some meeting is happening in the college, they can call in the canteen and order so that they provide food for every staff for that particular function. So phone number is very necessary and this is multi-value attribute because it is not necessary that the canteen should have only one phone number. They can provide even more than one phone number. If two phone numbers are there, if one is not available automatically, the person can try through the other number. So that is one important attribute. Next is lease period. Generally, canteens will be taken under lease. So, lease period, whether it is a year or six months, it depends on each canteen based on your contract. So, lease period is an important attribute. So, these are all the attributes of the entity canteen. Next, let us look into the attributes of the entity student. Students will be having a name which is an attribute and this name can be further divided as first name, middle name and last name. So I am able to divide this attribute further as first name, middle name and last name. So therefore it is known as a composite attribute. You will call something as a composite attribute when you are able to divide it further. Next, students will have an ID and you, you must underline this ID because it is a primary key. ID card will be provided for every student in the college. So now, for example, if 1000 students are studying in a college, all 1000 students will be having a unique ID. Not even one match of ID will be there. No two persons will be having the same ID at any cost. It is going to be different for every single thousand students. So therefore, it is a primary key and it must be underlined. Next, staff. Uh, another attribute for student can be section. Next, department of the student. Which department he or she belongs to? If it is engineering, whether he or she belongs to IT department or computer science or triple E or EC, whatever. Section is inside the canteen. For example, if 10 benches are there, sometimes it will be written that the first two benches are only for the staff. It should not be used by the students. So the section of the students is going to be the remaining eight seats remaining eight benches so that is a section 
Next, if you take staff, staff will be having a name which can be further divided as first name, middle name and last name. Next, staffs will also be having an ID. For example, if 20 staffs are there, all 20 staffs will be having a unique ID. So, therefore, it is a primary key. Next, staffs will also be having section this section is again the first two benches are only for staff so the first two benches will come under this section and then the remaining eight it can be used by the students by common people as well as by the staffs that can also be a rule next staffs department so this particular staff belongs to this department so that can be one attribute Next, workers. Worker will have a name, name of the worker. Next, workers will have phone number which is necessary to collect. Next, address of the worker. All this will be collected while giving job for the, for the worker. So, while selecting the worker for that job, all these details will be collected. The worker can have more than one phone number. That is the reason I have written it inside double ovals. So therefore, it is a multi-value attribute. Phone number is a multi-value attribute. Address of the worker. Next, count of cleaning workers. So if you take workers, some workers are kept for cleaning. Next, count of suppliers. So, some workers are just for supplying the food and some workers are for cleaning the tables and some count of cooks. So, some workers, their job is to cut the vegetables and prepare the food. So, workers are divided as cleaning workers and cooks and suppliers. So, these are all the attributes of workers. Again, workers will also be having an ID which is unique. It must be underlined. If 10 workers are working in that canteen, all 10 will be given an ID number which is unique. And their details will be collected and stored in the database. Next uh, entity is menu. So if you take menu, wedge menu or non-wedge menu. Next, price of each item in the menu. Next, beverages. So what are all the juices available, tea, coffee available and snacks available. Next, Lunch, lunch available, breakfast available in the menu, items in the menu for breakfast and items in the menu for lunch and beverages, wedge items, non-wedge items and cost of each item in the menu. So these are all the attributes of the entity menu. Next, bill counter attributes of this. Bill number. So, this is a primary key. It must be underlined. Because bill number is going to be unique for every single bill. Now, if one person has bought three items, a bill will be generated for that person separately. And if another person is going to buy some two items, a separate bill will be given for that person. So, Unique bills will be given for every single person. That is the proof that you have bought something in this canteen and this much you have paid. So while eating the food, no one can question you whether you have paid or not because you are having the proof. You can show the bill that I have already paid. You can go show the bill and get the item that you have paid for. Next, payment mode. Whether you are going to pay direct by giving cash or through phone pay 
or G pay or Paytm. So any other ways like this. So these are all the attributes of the entity bill counter. So this is the second step. The last step is we need to connect two entities by drawing a relationship. Relationship is nothing but a diamond box which will be connecting two entities through a line. So now I have to draw a line like this and draw a diamond box like this and join like this. So canteen provides food to the students. Canteen provides food to the students. Inside this relationship I'm writing provides food and this same relationship I'm connecting to to the staff also because canteen provides food to student and canteen provides food to the staff also. Next, I'm going to connect canteen and workers and I'm going to write has inside this. So canteen has workers. Next, I'm going to draw a relationship between canteen and menu. So canteen has menu. So canteen has menu. Next, workers I'm going to connect to students as well as to staff. Workers supply food. So workers supply food to students as well as to staff. Next, students pay bill in the bill counter. Same, staffs also pay bill in the bill counter. So, this is the flow. So, canteen provides food to the students. Then, canteen provides food to the staff. Then, canteen has workers. Then, canteen has menu. Then workers supply food to the students. Workers supply food to the staff. Next, students pay the bill in the bill counter. Staffs also pay the bill in the bill counter. So this is a perfect ER diagram for the topic college canteen management. Thank you. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and share it with your friends.